You are, you know, in our lounges all the time. You've been on so many, uh, you've been on Shortland Street, Outrageous Fortunes, uh, the almighty Johnsons like that. I mean, you're, you're on every show, it seems. <laughs> I wish. How, <laughs> how did it feel to go from, because you used to be a travel agent. Yeah. How did it feel to go from really quite a regular sort of job to being famous? Uh, look, I, I was a travel agent in Palmer's North. I, I, when I was at school, all I wanted to be was, was a travel agent. And, and um, I used to follow a, a local travel agent in Palmer's North around the streets. His name was Ian Flyger, a great friend of mine and a, and, a, and a mentor back in the day to me. And I would, uh, I would finish school, I would then walk around the PDC Plaza, or whatever it was there, and, and I would chase him down. And every Friday I would ask if there's a job going, Mr. Flyger, and he'd always say no. And I'd end up working for a year with the BNZ, but they didn't stop me on a Friday going asking for a job. One day he just relented and gave me a job. Awesome. That yeah. is, that's exactly like, and it, you know, you hear about people like Elvis who are knocking on the door every day. You know, that's the thing of persistence, I guess. I still knock on the door today. Yeah. But he gave me a job. I stayed with him for seven years. It was a wonderful seven years. But in that seven years, I traveled across to England. I took groups to England. I saw the shows and et cetera. And I got involved in the local amateur dramatic society because I wanted to go out with a particular girl that was heavily involved with yeah. it. And I, and, um, and I fell in love with the, the with the arts, I fell in love with the people in the arts, the, the different um, personalities of people and, and uh, after having been to England I decided I wanted to do that as a career. Now I could go to one or two places, I could go to London or I could go to New York and New York was not an option for me because of visa. And I got a job at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane which was an incredible theatre yeah. and at that time it would just started to house the original version of Miss Saigon and I got a job front of house giving people their brochures and programs and and escorting them to their seats and I slowly worked my way up the ranks to what they call a red coat and a red coat was a, uh, a person who <coughs> looked after people in the in the special hospitality rooms and they were a slightly high elevated version of, a, of, of the blue coat usher and then I went on to be the fireman there and had to lock the place up at night and I was just a, and I just threw myself into that environment of the theatre world and from that I met people and and I auditioned for a, a a job in, in a local version of Annie when they were paying 50 quid a week, something like that, to, to do it. And if it went okay, then they were going to do it at, again at Christmas time on an you know, equity minimum basis. And I, uh, I got the gig, so it cost me money to go and do it, but I loved doing it. And I was seen doing and doing Annie, and I got, I got that job. And, and a man from the Chelmsford Repertory Society came to see the show. Chelmsford Repertory Society was one of the last two full repertory societies in England where you, you rehearse during the day and you work at night and then the following week you do the play that you've rehearsed all week and you start rehearsing on another one. And that first particular musical that they did was the Rocky Horror Show and I played a ghoul. And I had to wear a mask and I, was a, I had to do the assistant stage management work and whatever and, and after, this, after the first night um, I asked my friend Kevin, who was also a ghoul, I said, when we take our bow, should we lift up our masks? Because oh. no one knows who we are. And he says, we can't do that. It's just, it's, the show's been set, figure two, that we have to do this. I said, well, I'm going to lift my mask up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what and a I rebel. Did. Yeah, well, I, yeah, it was. I, I broke some rules. I didn't break the law, but I broke some rules. Yeah. And uh, the next day I got called into the producer's office and uh -oh. he, yeah, he basically had a, they tore a, a minor strip off me. He said, look, the show's been set. You can't do this. And I says, oh, look, I'm very sorry, but we're not even in the program. And I think I worked hard. And it was just a mask off. He says, the show's been set. But actually, anyway, have a look at this. And it was a fax that had come through. And the casting director from Rocky Horror London, the West End version, was in that night seeing somebody else. But I took a shine to what she saw and was inviting me in to meet Richard O'Brien and Christopher Malcolm the next week wow. to audition for the West End version. How exciting. Which I did. There was probably loads of feedback from people's mums going, <laughs> who's that cute dude that picked yeah, his mask? Who's that, that boy? <laughs> I was a boy back then. Yeah. Oh, how lovely. So what are you working on right now? I finished two projects, uh, one project this year and another project last year, but both the same. Nothing Trivial and Almighty Johnson's, which are wonderful shows to be part of. But uh, they were both decided that um, they weren't going to be filmed anymore in the same week, which was a bit of a blow. Yeah. Um, but it opens up opens up plenty of doors. So we're now hunting in Australia, and at the moment, I think the 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 concept of television is changing so much that people are now making television for other channels or for for internet or there's a different way of viewing it. And, and what you've done, you've decided this is what you want to do. I'm going to make my own television program. I think that's what what it's about now. 
So I've, um, I've partnered with a, a very successful writer and producer and now we're developing a project that, um, that I want my name attached to, which is a completely different role from what I've ever played before and now we're going about uh, developing that and scripting that and getting that off the ground. Yeah. And I don't think, you know, my, my dream, my hope, my, my vision is that we don't have to go down the network route anymore, um, that we can produce our own our own work, our own television programs, because we can access it at any time. There's so much more choice now, you know, the world has really changed, you know, um, a single person can be a business and just set it up in five seconds with a business card and a URL, you know, you can make your own TV shows, you can watch what you want when you want. It's an exciting time to be in, t it's an exciting time to be in business because it's, it, the, the world is a village. In terms of managing your workload and your motivation because sometimes you know you've got two shows on the go and you must be full on mm. and then other times you know less so how does that work you know this i've had this conversation once before i don't think there's ever a middle ground with the work that i do it's always the most incredible hires you know when your agent calls you up and they say that you're wanted for this job it's the most amazing feeling and that happen, that can happen every day. Yeah. You know that my phone could go now. It's so exciting. You've turned uh, it off there, right? It, yes, it's <laughs> off. Um, or there's and there's the, inc the incredible lows of oh my 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 God, nothing trivial is, f is finished. Is this the last? Was mm -hmm. that my part? Was yeah. that the job? You know, was that the last one? So there never seems to be a standard a standard ground, which is which I like. I like living yeah. on the extremes. Okay, so you've designed your life how you want it to be. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's not finished yet. <laughs> You're still young. No, we're still young. So. We're, yeah, we're still young. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in, Shane. That's Lovely awesome. to be here.